Justin Hayward, my special guest in studio here at Q1043. <clears throat> a brilliant, beautiful new solo album, Spirits of the Western Sky. Uh, you can find it. Uh, um, go to my blog, Q1043.com. You'll see it's JustinHayward.com. And thanks to our dear friends at Eagle Rock for putting this out. Congratulations. Yeah, me too, yeah. But yeah, I thank them very much too because they've... Um that, that everything I everything I said, they just said, "Yeah, you do what you want," you know. So <laughs> they they trusted me to do what I wanted. With I it. see Kenny Loggins helped with one song on this. Yes, I, I wrote a song with Kenny um, a couple of years ago, and and, and really it was going to be for his album, and then he he went and joined another group. I think he joined a, <clears throat> a couple of other musicians. Yeah, with Gary Burr and some. Yeah, he's doing yes, it. and a lady, right. yeah, a young uh, girl, and um, then he didn't make the album, and. I, I saw it lying around, and I demoed it and dropboxed it, you know, or you right. send it back to him, and he sent a bit back to me. And I said, listen, I, I'm going to use the song we did together. We wrote it on the road somewhere in Albuquerque, in New Mexico, when we were at the same place. Fantastic. And uh, I, we just emailed backwards and forwards with the parts, and and he was great. He did the, all the backing vocals on it. It was lovely. Listen, the, the History of the Moody's is incredible. And by the way, I hear uh, a nice box set coming out, History of the Moody's. Yeah, there's soon. a box set, um, a lot of kind of live stuff that maybe people haven't heard. I wish I could say there's gems on it that have never been released, but I've still got those. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll probably stay unreleased, yeah. Uh, you know, be, between the hits and the, the solo <clears throat> project, <throat> you had that beautiful album with John Lodge, Blue Jays. Yeah. And there's an, a song that came out... Was it uh, all this in World War Two? I think was the collection. Was it not that spawned Forever Autumn? No, it was. No, that was nothing to do with Blue Jays. That was to do. Um, no, that was after that. I was very lucky to get a call one day from a guy called Jeff Wayne. Yes, who had the rights War to of the, the World. War of the Worlds. Yes, yeah, the War uh, to the H.G. Wells story, the War of the Worlds. Right, and he he phoned me up and and said, "Are you the guy who sang Nights in White Satin?" So I said, well, I might be. Depends what <laughs> Depends. you're going to say. Yeah. <laughs> so he said, because I, I love that song and I love your voice and I've got a, a song that would be, that I've, I've done in your key with you in mind. And uh, so I listened to it and um, and, I, and actually a guy that, uh, that that was working for the band was in the room when I listened to it. And it was this guy who said to me, you ought to do that song. It's really good. And I, and I said, well, I, I don't do other people's material. He said, you should think about it in that case. He said, you should think about that one. So I phoned Jeff back and said, yeah, I'd, I'd love to do it. It'll be an adventure. And I went down, and uh, he'd made the room all dice, the recording environment. And then I did Forever Autumn from the War of the Words album. And then I did Eve of the War and got more involved with the album. And it turned out to be a great success for him and for me. I remember first hearing it, uh, my late mentor and your <coughs> late friend, Scott Muni, first yes. playing it on the air. At, yeah, he liked it, yeah. At NEW, and just, you know, you have that ability. You just focus a song. The sound of your voice was just, you were made to do this. And you know how songs change meanings sometimes throughout their lives and uh, different events. After September 11th, 2001, and here in New York City, it was just, it was days of information. And people say, how did you work on the air at those days? Well, that was easy because it was just information. Go here. Call there. Here's the hospital number. Here's this. That was the easy part. The hard part was getting back into music, was after this yeah, horrible tragedy imagine. of death and destruction. Imagine. How do you begin to do all this again and mm -hmm. get back into life? So what songs do you play? And that was the song I thought, well, there's only one song to play to start. Oh. And it's still to it's this day. Quite touching. It's chilling. Would you mind? Let, let's do it. This is Justin Hayward, Forever Autumn, at Q1043. The summer sun is fading as the year grows old. And darker days are drawing near The winter winds will be much colder Now you're not here I 
I watch the birds fly south across the autumn sky. And one by one they disappear. I wish that I was flying with them. No, you're not here. Like the sun through the trees, you came to love me. Like a leaf on a breeze, you blew away. Through autumn's golden gown, we used to kick our way. love this time of year Those fallen leaves lie undisturbed now Cause you're not here Cause you're not here Cause you're not here Like the sun through the trees, you came to love me. Like a leaf on a breeze, you blew away. A gentle rain falls softly on my weary eyes As if to hide a lonely tear My life will be forever autumn Cause you're not here Cause you're not here Magnificent. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Justin Hayward, Moody Blues, live in the studio at Q1043. My God, that song just rips my heart out. That is so beautiful. You had to have sung that song. That song yeah, was yeah, you. Yeah. you. I was, I was no very one else, lucky. Yeah, I, no one else was doing that song. There's a couple of songs that, you, you know, that I've had that nights, nights is one, Question is another one, and, uh, and Forever Autumn. You can go anywhere in the world. And, you know, and do it, and people, even if they haven't heard of the Moody Blues, they know the songs. That's really nice, yeah. So I meant it makes to, people happy or you, sad. You're walking through anywhere in the Western world, and on the yeah. radio, <clears throat> somewhere in a store, there's a Moody Blues song on. Yeah. What do you What do you think when you you walk into a store, you just hear it in a taxi in New York, in L.A., in London, wherever you are? It always sounds quieter than everybody else's. <laughs> I always want to turn it up. I think, you know, ours isn't a... That's funny. Ours isn't as loud as the the one before or the one after. Right. But that's that's an illusion because, I, as you know, I think most radio stations compress things right. or, or limit things to the same level anyway. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. I you know, as your fan, I'm such a huge fan from the early days, and we all. That's a great pleasure. Uh, it is it's a lovely pleasure. It's a great pleasure to be here again and be with you, and that's not always nice. Yeah. Thank you. You said to me something that yeah. really it took to heart many years ago, and I've shared yeah. it with folks. Is that for bands that keep on keeping on for many, many years, and you have internal disagreements, and there's times sure. you're at each other's throats, and there's times that you're not, <clears throat> but that you always said that you found happiness in just being able to play live. And whether it was Madison Square Garden or whether, you know, you're playing the Moody Blues Cruise or, or playing Red Rocks, wherever yeah. it is, that it's the connection to the audience that you appreciate. And I see that sometimes people get lost in the, you know, if you did this or if we had that manager, we would, be, you know, it's all about what's yeah. not there as opposed to enjoying what's there. Yes. 
No, yeah, I think you're absolutely right, and 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 it's a temptation myself to think about uh, the people that in the past that have taken advantage of you know me as a writer or as a band or something like that with different contracts, the people surrounding, and and you, you're right. I mean. Um, uh, you know, I, I've had the pleasure of being able to be the person that's been able to perform that and to see those people and to uh, and to, to to look at people together, thinking, "Oh, he's playing our song, and, and I like yes. this one." And that's that's something that uh, I never really want to want to give up, and um, I, I do that as long as I possibly can. Well, your voice is one of those remarkable freaks of nature in a good way. You've been, you've had a lot of road miles on that instrument, and yeah, it sounds yeah, I know, perfect. Yeah. I must respect it more. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Spirits of the Western Sky, the new album from Justin Hayward. It's beautiful. And uh, when do we get the Moody's box set? I think that's out in the summer. I think uh, July. Yes, that's expensive as well. I, I, I right. got to ask them the price until recently, and. It was like, oh, it's like 400 quid. Well, <laughs> well, listen, the Pink Floyd box set is incredible. Yeah. The Beatles box set. Yeah. The vinyl. I won't be buying those either. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> oh, and I meant to ask you, because so, yeah. I'm kind of the Beatle geek at the station. We do breakfast yeah. with Hello. the Beatles. Okay. Tell me, when you, tell me about your first finding the Beatles. How did that happen? What was your moment? Oh, in? okay. So I was, um, I was working, I think, with... Um, I was either still at school or I just, I was very lucky. When I left school at 16, I got a job straight away after a couple of months of lying in bed in the morning <laughs> with um, uh, a guy called Marty Ward. And I was playing guitar for Marty Ward, who was a rock and roll singer in the late 50s, early 60s. And I was just a kid, but he, he, you know, he gave me this job. And so, um, and then I remember being, going home to see my parents in, in the west of England. And on the radio, I heard Love Me Do. And I remember distinct, I can see it as clear as anything now, walking down the street after hearing Love Me Do and thinking my life is going to be completely different. Everything, the world has changed. The Beatles are in it. Wow. You could tell in one really? record. Really? I could then because I knew what else was around. Listen, all we had in the UK was Move It. <laughs> right. You know, do you remember that? with yes. Cliff? It was a great record, but that was the only rock and roll record we had. Cliff Richard, right? Yeah, yeah, with Cliff. And um, the rest was just kind of American covers and until the Beatles. And then suddenly the Beatles were in our lives. And, of course, it was, you know, instant. It was instant. Fantastic. And to be in London with them in the 60s as part of that relatively small group of two or three hundred people who all knew each other that was wonderful too did you cross pollinate in terms of recordings and <laughs> studios and sending tapes things uh, like well that? it was uh, we knew them anyway and i i knew i knew them all some better than others you know and i played with george at donovan's house one day that was very nice and we sat down and played together but um, you didn't question it. It was just like buddies. Uh, it was, everybody knew each other. You didn't have to be introduced. But Mike was very fortunate because Abbey Road was only just down the road from, was a few hundred yards from where uh, the Decca studio was. And Mike would uh, just was, had, was free to walk in there any time. And the Beatles said, hey, Mike. I never had the courage to go with him. <laughs> but Mike was in there. He'd pop down after our recording or before ours and just to hang out with them for a little while. And he, and that, he was very lucky. He had, the, he had the boldness to do that, and they welcomed him in. And also, he fixed the Mellotron that was in. They, there was one in Abbey Road. Right. I think they used it on Strawberry Fields and right, a couple right, of other right. things. And um, Mike, uh, you know, helped fix that a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> Great stories. Justin yeah. Hayward, thank you so much. Great pleasure.